Six minutes and 18 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. The Rockledge Raiders up by six, 37 to 31. We were off the air for just a little bit, a little technical difficulties. Shot is up for the Coco Tigers. Rebound goes to Robbie Hicks of the Rockledge Raiders. Ball coming down to the, this end of the court to Lions. Lions to Hicks. Hicks fakes a three, drives the lane, and he's going to lose the ball. Tigers will get the turnover. Going back the other way. <coughs> Excuse me, Russell. All the way down, gives it off to Youngblood at the last minute. Youngblood lays it in. Rockledge Raiders trying to get down to this end in transition. Stevens up. Number 25, Raymond Sellers with the block. And the Rockledge Raiders will take the ball out of bounds. Ball goes in. Raiders with the ball. Now it's Lions. Lions over to the corner. They're going to get... We're going to get the Raiders with a foul. And it will turn it over. They'll give the ball to the Coco Tigers at the 542 mark. The Tigers down to the Raiders by 4, 37 to 33. If you just joined us, we had some technical difficulties. We are sorry about that. It appears that we're up and running again loud and clear on SpaceCoastDaily.com. I want to thank Tom Pal Palermo at Sports Center on Merritt Island for getting us back and running. Steve? Raiders up by four, 5.36 to go in the third quarter. On the far side, Tigers drive the lane, kick it out, three-point shot attempt, no good. Rebound goes back to Youngblood. He goes for a three. It's no good. Rockledge basketball. Raiders will let it go out of bounds. Robbie Hicks will chase it. will follow it out of bounds. So the Raiders will get the ball back at the 5.22 mark. They're up by four, 37 to 33 here on the home court of the Coco Tigers. Raiders are gonna walk it up now. Javante Hayes will do the honors now. He'll drive, puts the ball up off the front of the glass, gets his own rebound, kicks it out to Jockwell Lyons. Lyons over to the inside. Here's it underneath, ball shot up, no good. Youngblood gets the rebounds for the Tigers. Youngblood and the Tigers off and running. Raymond Sellers on the far side. Slows things down just a little bit back to Tigers, Jawante Russell at the top of the key. Three-point shot attempt, no good. Rebound Raiders. Robbie Hicks with the rebound. He'll bring it down, being guarded by Russell. Ball kicked back outside, now to Lions. Lions over to Hicks. Hicks looking for a pick. He gets one, shot up, 12-footer. Off the glass, no good. Youngblood gets the rebound for the Tigers. Jawante Russell brings the ball down court. 4.36 to go in the third quarter. Raiders up 37-33. Once again, the Tigers offensively slow things down just a little bit. Javen Trutland with the ball, trying to work it inside. 12-foot jump shot by Youngblood. No good. Rebound, Raiders. Hicks with the rebound. He's going to pull it down and head down. Quick pass underneath. And the shot is up and off the glass. And they're going to give it to Zay Stevens. And he'll is fouled. He'll go to the line. 7 points now for Stevens. Score now Raiders 39, the Coco Tigers 33. Going to the free throw line now will be Zay Stevens, the 5 foot 10 sophomore. He's got 7 points in the ball game. We are at the 4-12 mark in the third period. Free throw line shot is up and no good rebound goes to the Tigers. Juante Russell brings the ball down court on the far side. The young blood at the top of the key thinks about a three, changes his mind, gets the ball over to Javen Trutling. Trutling well beyond the arc, stolen by Rockers. Raiders with the steal. Here they come. They got a quick two on three. Shot up, no good. Shot up, a rebound. And following the shot was John Clubs Lions. He gets the points, and the Raiders now up. 41-33. Lyons shows his athleticism, one of the best quarterbacks in the county, one of the best defensive backs, just one of the best athletes in Brevard County. Tigers driving the lane off the glass, two points, 41-35, Rockledge lead. Raiders quickly in transition, bring the ball down, handling in his Lions. Lions kicks it to the outside. <coughs> Hayes with the ball now, slowing things down at the 319 mark. T.J. Jordan now with the ball. Raiders are gonna spread it out, now the drive. Way over to the corner to Hicks. Hicks being guarded, he's gonna drive and he'll get a travel call. That'll be a turnover. And the Raiders will turn the ball back over to the Coco Tigers. 
Rockledge up by six, 302. To go in the third quarter as Antonio, Antonio Youngblood will inbound the basketball right in front of the Rockledge bench. A little bit of pressure applied by the Raiders defense, not a lot. Another phantom number in. I see number 33 for the Tigers. Don't know who that is. But, uh, three point shot attempt is short. Rebound underneath, put back, no good. Long rebound back to the Tigers. Now Youngblood in control of the basketball, trying to drive the lane, turnaround shot, no good. Rebound, Rockers. Raiders go up and get the rebound. That's Dorian Josie with the rebound, brings it down. Here comes Jacquez Lyons. He gets out of control, loses the ball, but they say Youngblood knocked it out of bounds last by the Coco Tigers. So the Raiders will get it underneath their own basket. Zay Stevens. We'll bring it in for the Rockledge Raiders back in the ball game now. Javon Hayes, Javante Hayes. Get the ball into TJ Jordan. Jordan back to the outside. Raiders with the ball trying to get it in, and they do. They get it into Dorian Josie. Josie turns around, three foot shot, good. It's an eight point Raiders lead, 2.14 to go in the third quarter. Bruce Judson brings it all the way down court, kicks it back out. Now Youngblood trying to get it inside to Jordan. Working it around underneath. Shot off the glass, no good. Rebound, put back, no good. Put back, good. Good offensive rebounding by the Coco Tigers. They're within six. Who was that, Steve? 34. The Raiders bring it down court. And we're going to have a whistle. There'll be a foul somewhere. It's going to be on the Raiders. They'll walk down to the other side. Anthony Hills looking to inbound the basketball for the Coco Tigers on the far side. A jam-packed Coco High School gym tonight. I'm Steve Wilson along with Orville Susong. Special Tuesday evening edition of the Friday night locker room. Jawante Russell brings the ball down court, goes right, goes left, drives the lane, kicks it out to Youngblood who drives the lane. Off the glass, easy two-point basket for Antonio Youngblood. Thank you. Raiders now bring it down court, 43 to 39 with the Raiders in the lead. Handling the ball now, TJ Jordan. Drive now, pull up, kicks it back outside. Eight foot jumper up and off is good by Stevens. He's got nine. Stolen right back by the Raiders. Ball is up, and that is Stevens. Stevens talking a little trash. <coughs> 45 to 39 now, the Raiders slowly pulling away here in the third period. Going to the free throw line will be Dave Stevens. James Rowe, the head coach of the Coco Tigers, is gonna call a timeout at the 110 mark. And while he does, we wanna say thanks to Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office. They provide representation for members of the public who have suffered a head trauma or a brain or spinal cord injury. Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office located in Rockledge at 8.30. Executive Lane Suite 140. The phone number for J Jim Knudsen, 632-2722. Packed house this evening. Tuesday night, Friday night, Orville, where are we going to be? I don't know, where? Where? <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna tell me. No, I forget. That's right, we only talked about oh, you it yesterday. Oh, you don't know either, <laughs> No, nah, we're gonna be back in Melbourne Friday night. It's the Vieira. Oh, that's Melbourne right. girls game. Ladies game. Going to the free throw line now. Jay Stevens shot is up and good. He gets a three pointer. He's got 12 now. Tigers on the run. Throw the ball out of bounds. We'll go back to the Rockledge Raiders. This portion of the Friday night locker room is funded in part by Florida Master Temp, located at 3475 North Highway US 1 in Coco. Florida Master Temp is an authorized sales and surface outlet for air conditioning systems refrigeration equipment, ice making equipment, and ice machines. Give them a call at 639-3166. Raiders now on this end of the court with the ball. Judson tries to steal it. Now we're back to five on five. They go inside off the glass, no good. And that shot was up by Malcolm Clark, 6'2 senior, just entered the ball game. A little out of control, he'll lose it. 
Young blood for the Tigers will take it out of bounds. 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Raiders up by nine. Tigers with the basketball. That's Jawante Russell brings the ball down court. Youngblood playing far away from the basket, the biggest man on the court. Driving the lane, Judson shot, no good. Rebound, Rockledge. Rockledge going to hu hurry now, bringing the ball down court is Jordan. Jordan gets the ball out to Hayes. Over back to Jordan, we're under 12 seconds. The Raiders will look for the last shot. Under seven, under eight, they give the ball over to Carlos Jones. Back, here's the shot. 15-footer, no good. As the buzzer sounds, the ball ricochets back to the Cocoa Tigers at the end of the third quarter. It is the Rockledge Raiders, 48, and the Cocoa Tigers, 39. Community Bank of the South has three locations, one at 277 North Sykes Creek Parkway in Merritt Island, one on State Road 524 in Cocoa, and the other at 1902 South Fisk Boulevard in Rockledge. Community Bank of the South provides personal banking, online banking, business banking, commercial and residential loans, and other service. Community Bank of the South is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. The website, cbosdirect.com. Eight minutes left in this basketball game to determine who will be the winner of Barbecue Bowl number one. This is the first meeting this year between the Rockledge Raiders and the Cocoa Tigers. They'll play again twice during the regular season. This is not a district contest. Years ago it was, but not this year. 48-39 in favor of the Rockledge Raiders as we head to the fourth quarter. They'll put eight minutes on the clock. Rockledge Raiders will get the ball out of bounds. We're all ready to go, and Larry Torch looks this way. We wave our hands, and we're up and running. Raiders in the ball game now. Over to T.J. Jordan, the 5'9 freshman. Back over to Joe, Jock Les Lyons. Lyons kicks it out, three-point shot up and good. And that is Carlos Jones, his first point of the ball game. It's a 12-point Rockledge lead as the Tigers bring the ball down court on the far side, almost losing control somehow or another. He didn't, a little bit out of control, Rockledge ball. Steve, the Raiders are taking, slowly taking over this game. Ball is up, block, shot. Give the ball off to Zay Stevens. Air ball, young blood rebound for the Tigers. Young blood off to the races. He's got three on three. He's going to take it to the hoop and lay it in. Two points, Antonio Youngblood. Youngblood leading all. Tried to throw a Hail Mary pass down the court. It is long. And Carlos Jones cannot keep up to it. And now we got a little bit of trash talking going on. Officials now are going to slow it up. They're still talking a little bit. We're going to have a technical against both of them. And that's not going to be good. Logan Keith or James Rowe, either one, are going to be happy with that call. Technical on double zero for the Tigers. That is Anthony Hill. And then we got a technical on Carlos Jones. <clears throat> so at the 7-10 mark, they'll stop play. Youngblood comes over and talks to the senior, Anthony Hills, to try to calm him down. Yeah, you have to be smart. You're down by 10. The Tigers are down by 10, 7 10 left in the game. You gain nothing and lose everything by committing a technical. You just you can't do that. They're fortunate that it offset because the Raiders, it was a double technical, but uh, you got to play a little bit more under control than that. Antonio Youngblood waiting for the basketball. He'll inbound the ball underneath the Raiders' basket. Tigers will take it all the way down court. Once again, offensively, Coco spreads out, trying to spread out the Rockledge defense, driving to the top of the key, going right, going left. The key is working inside. Hook shot by Young Blood, no, no, young blood, no good. You can see what the Tigers are trying to do. They're trying to spread out the defense of the Raiders, have Young Blood go one on one inside. And nobody one on one seems going to stop him. No, it's not going to happen. Bruce Judson looking to inbound the basketball underneath his own basket. Finds a teammate to get it into, driving the lane. Shot no good, blocked underneath by Jacquez Lyons. 
Number five for the Raiders having a heck of a game tonight. Tigers will go to the Lions shooting too. They said Lions got a piece of the arm. 647 left in this basketball game. Raiders up by 10, 51 to 41. Shooting two, the Tigers can pull to within eight if they make them both. Referee's talking to Logan Keith, head coach of the Rockledge Raiders, explaining to him exactly what happened. I don't know that Coach Keith necessarily thought that it was a foul. The officials did. They're going to win that argument. First free throw attempt by the Tigers is short, no good. Score remains 51-41. Second free throw attempt coming is up, and it is good. It's a nine-point Raiders lead. 6.47 to go in the game. Raiders now going to bring the ball down court. 6.47 to go, 51-42 to in favor of the Rockledge Raiders. Tigers put on a full court press. Raiders trying to break it, having a hard time doing so. They finally get it over the half-court line. Ball in, driving, loses it. Coco Tigers pick it up. Tigers off and running. They need the basketball. They need points. Off the glass, Youngblood, two points. Youngblood now with 40, 26 points in the ball game. Again, the Raiders trying to break the full court press, and they do. Look out. Nice play, but they, they're going to get a foul, and it's going to be against Youngblood, I believe. Good ball move at that time by the Raiders, but they just missed the easy layup. Youngblood gets a rebound, but over the back he goes, and they'll call a foul on him. Coach Rose not so sure about that one, but that will hold up. It's a seven-point Raider lead, 6-17 left in the game. Going to the free throw line now will be Dorian Josie. Josie with five points in the first quarter, five in the second quarter, two in the third. So he's looking at 12 points, his first shot, and he'll drain it. So he's got 13 in the ball game. Opportunity now with 6.17 to go to put another point on the board without the clock ticking. Shot is up and he's got them both. Back to a nine point Rockledge Raider lead. Jawante Russell brings the ball down court. Slowing things down just a little bit. They need points, but they still, uh, still plenty of time on the clock. 6.05 left, driving the lane. Stolen almost by the Raiders. Saved by the Coco Tigers. Six foot jump shot, no good. Rebound underneath by the Tigers from Coco High School. They're going to take another jumper, no good. Rebound Raiders. Rebound with the Rockledge Raiders. They got one on one. Quick fast break up and off the glass. And it is good by TJ Jordan. 11 point Rockledge lead, 541 left of the game. Tigers once again bring the ball down court. Jawante Russell drives it. Now kicks it back out to Anthony Hills. Working it into the corner, Jawante Russell. Russell back to the top of the key. Slowing things down. Coco Tigers, 5.20 to go in the game. Coco down by 11. Bruce Judson in and out, no good. Driving the lane, turn around, jump shot, no good. Tigers rebound, team in blue. Josie with the rebound. Quick transition the other way. There they go, the drive. Kick it out to the outside. Fakes the three-pointer, drives in. Hammered hard and goes down as Jacquez Lyons. <coughs> Drawing the foul for the Coco Tigers. Will be number 33, and we don't have a name for him. And while we have this moment, we want to thank Beepo Brady's on State Road 524 in Coco. Going to the line now will be jo Jacquez Lyons. Beepo Brady's always big supporters of local sports, and the tie-in with the Friday night locker room is a natural. Lions misses the first shot. He's got 10. He'll have an opportunity for one more shot. Beepo Brady's want to thank Sean O'Reilly, Timmy O'Reilly, and the whole staff at Beepo Brady's on State Road 524. See, we'll be heading there after the game, eh? Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Lions back to the line now. 4.59 to go here in the ball game. Shot is up and it's good, he's got 11. Under five minutes to go in the game. It's a 12 point Rockledge lead as Bruce Judson brings the ball down court. 
They're going to call a foul on the floor. Lions guarding Judson just a little bit too tight in front of the scorer's table. That will send the Coco High quarterback to the line, shooting one and one. Lyons sits down, takes a rest. Robbie Hicks re-enters the basketball game for the Rockledge Raiders. Say Stevens and Raymond Sellers having a little chat at midcourt. Now Bruce Judson has the basketball in his hands. First free throw attempt by number 23 is no good. Rebound Raiders. One and one shot. Hicks comes up with it, coming down quickly. Going to drive all the way, kicks it back. Underneath he goes to Josie. Josie puts it in for two. 14 point Raiders lead, 442 to go in the game. Tigers bringing it down court now. Moving beyond the arc, young blood about six, four feet beyond the three-point line. He drives the lane, shot up and in, two points, young blood. Young blood with 28 points in the ball game. There's a man wide open, kicks it back out. Young blood ends up with the ball. It's a turnover for the Raiders. Saves it to young blood. It's a 12-point Raiders game. Driving the lane, shot by the Tigers, no good. Tip no good. Rebound Rockledge. They're going to slow it down now. Lost the ball a little bit with T.J. Jordan. Now he's going to drive, backs it up, looks at a three-pointer. Way over to the other side of the court to Hayes. We're under four minutes here in the fourth period. The Tigers down 58 to 46 to the Raiders. There's the drive, kicks it out. Hicks with a three-point shot, up and good. Robbie Hicks, three-pointer, makes it a 15-point Rockledge game, 344 left in this contest. Mark this date down, February 26th, 27th, and 28th. That will be the Seafood and Music Fest out of Port Canaveral. It'll be three days of seafood, three days of music concerts on two different stages. Uh, exciting bands such as the original Whalers, Third World, Clint Black, who will be there Saturday night performing. That'll be the 27th. Cherie White, Jana Ivy, Lights Out Project. I, I can go on and on, but go to space, spacecoastdaily.com for all the information and all the bands, all the music, the arts and crafts shows. There's a um, live live shark exhibit. There'll be sharks in the tank and uh, a number of individuals who I don't know what they're missing, but I don't know that I'm going to jump in a, <laughs> in a tank with a shark. But a number, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. I want you, and, and there are different prices of admission to get in. You can pay one price for the whole three days, you know, one price for concerts. Go to SpaceCoastDaily.com and they spell out exactly what you need to do to get in. But what an event that's going to be February 26th, 27th, and 28th, the Seafood and Music Fest out at the port. 61 to 46 here on the campus of Coco High School. The Rockledge Raiders with the lead, the Coco Tigers with the ball. Pressure tied, applied by the Tigers as Javen Trutling brings the ball down court. Raymond Sellers in the corner now kicks it out to Youngblood, puts a move on Hicks, dishes it out. Three-point shot, short, no good. Rebound underneath by the Tigers. They're going to go back out and look for another three, it appears. 3.22 to go in the game. It's a 15-point Raider lead. Tigers need points, and they need them in bunches. Youngblood guarded by Hicks, drives the lane. Off the glass, a little too strong, no good. Rebound, Raiders. Great rebound that time. They get it out quickly. <clears throat> Handling the ball, T.J. Jordan. There's a shot underneath. They got a man open up. Shot is up and good. And that is Dorian Josie. He's got 18. Nice move by the freshman. Javin Trutland once again in control of the basketball. The six-foot senior passes off. Three-point shot attempt by the Tigers. Short rebound. Rockledge. Long rebound falls right in T.J. Jordan's hands. Under three minutes to play. Jordan out to top of the key, looks to shoot, backs it up behind the three-point line, and he's going to set the offense up. Ball over to Stevens, back over. It goes to Hayes. Kicks out underneath, and that is Josie again. He's got 20. 
2.16 left in the game. Rockledge up by 19, 65 to 46. Antonio Youngblood waiting for the basketball on the far side. Anthony Hills checks back into the game for the Tigers. Youngblood finds Javen Trutland. Trutland off and running. Trutland with a three-point shot attempt is up and it is good. 65-49 Raiders. First points Trutland has all night and it doesn't come at a better time. Shot layup all the way to the other end. That's Zay Stevens. He's got 14 for the Raiders. The speed of Zay Stevens really showed on that possession. He's hard to keep up with. Another three-pointer by Youngblood in the Tigers. 15-point Raider lead. Youngblood with 31 points, but the Raiders still up over the Tigers. Ball being handled tonight by, by Javante Hayes. <clears throat> and Logan Keith of the Rockledge Raiders is going to call a timeout. And when he does, we want to thank Fantasy Pools and owner Joshua Jones. They've had 23 years of swimming pool building experience. Fantasy Pools offers concrete, fiberglass swimming pools, and is licensed and insured. They are also San Juan fiberglass pool distributors. Fantasy Pools is located at 1740 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge. The phone number, 863-2560. Shortly after the conclusion of this game, don't go away. We will be talking to our Friday night locker room player of the game and the winning coach, whoever that may be. There's two, three Raiders. If they hold on, they've got a 15-point lead with 92 seconds to go. So uh, we'll see who, We'll see how it all shakes out. There's a few contenders in there. I'm sure Orville will come up with a good one. He always does. The Raiders now have the ball. I want to remind everybody, coming soon to Port St. John, Jimmy's Restaurant. U.S. Highway 1 right by the front and that free market breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Give Jimmy's Restaurant a try when they get open at the front and that free market. The Raiders now with the ball. Loses it underneath, trying to dish it off to Dorian Josie, and then it will go out of bounds, and it will be the Rockledge Raider ball. Last touch by a Coco Tiger. Raiders bring it in. Get the ball, and it's going to be fouled. Sellers will be called for the foul for the Coco Tigers going to the line will be Javante Hayes. Hayes with seven points in the ball game, 67 to 52. The Rockledge Raiders in the lead with 1.13 left to go. Javante Hayes now goes to the line. He's got seven points. Oh no. Uh, 113 to go in the game. It? 73 seconds left. It's a 16 point Rockley's Raiders lead. So he makes both of them. So Javante Hayes gets, now has nine. Young Blood with the basketball. Tigers are just going to have to run out the clock. They're down by 17 with a minute to go in the game. Blocked by Robbie Hicks. Oh, yeah, Raiders with a fast break, and it's one on one. And that is number 24, Ju Junior Wilson, just coming into the ball game. He's got two. Sellers drives the lane off the glass for the Tigers, up in two points for Raymond Sellers. Sellers now with six points in the ball game. Logan Keith has his starters out of the ball game. And now Javon Hayes is going to come up a little limp, so he'll come out and take a seat. And now 42.9 seconds left to go. Javante Hayes excited about playing tonight. He played and attended Coco High School last year, played basketball for the Tigers. He transferred to Rockledge, and he walked up to the table before the game. He said, you're going to interview me? So uh -huh. I'm going to have a game tonight. He and his teammates have played very well tonight. Rockledge looking good. T.J. Jordan now goes to the line, first shot up and good. He's got five points for the Raiders. Score now 72 to 54. Jordan now with a second shot. It is up and also good. The Rockledge Raiders increase their lead, 73 to 54, under 40 seconds to go. It's a 19-point Raiders lead. Long three-point shot attempt, no good by the Tigers. Shot back up, fouled in the act of shooting is Javen Trutling. He'll go to the line shooting too. Rockledge Raiders come into the Cocoa High gym, and it looks like they're going to steal one. Ninth grade, JV and Varsity, all three winners tonight. 
for the Rockledge Raiders. First free throw attempt by Trutling is up. It, it is good. 73-55 Raiders lead. Second shot by Trutling is up and good as well. The Trutland has five points to score now, 73 to 56. Ball stolen by the Tigers, shot up and no good. Rebound goes to the Raiders, all the way down to their end of the court. Shot is up inside the 12-foot range, rebound right back to the shooter. He misses a shot, Youngblood with the rebound, kicks it way back down underneath the Sellers. Quick two points by Sellers inside of 10 seconds. Sellers with eight points, we're under 10, we're under five, Sellers steals the ball. Back over to Youngblood. Youngblood's going to dunk it, but no one will get excited about that one. Youngblood ends up with 33 points for the ball game, and at the end, as the buzzer sounds, it's the Rockledge Raiders 73 and the Coco Tigers 60. Once again, don't go away. In just a few minutes, we will be talking to our Friday night locker room player of the game and also to Logan Keith, head coach of the victorious Rockledge Raiders. We'll give you some of the scoring here in just a second as we tally it up. The Rockledge Raiders end up with a big win tonight over the Coco Tigers. They come in. I don't know if you say they steal one or not, Steve. I don't know who you would think that would be the favorite on this, but the Rockledge Raiders come out with a big win tonight. Dorian Josie with 20. The sixth freshman. And Javante Hayes now, has 19. Let's see. We've got to figure out it's going to be a close call. Player of the game, we're going to give it a little thought here. Oh, let's see. It's a tough one. Pivo Brady, State Road 524. Are you getting hungry like we are? It's time to head on over to Beefs. Pivo Brady, State Road 524 in Coco. While we have an opportunity, we want to thank DeCandio and Associates, Allstate Insurance, Jennifer DeCandio, Agency Principal. Two locations to serve you, one in Port St. John at 950 Fave Boulevard. You can give them a call at 631-3777. Second location is in MIMS at 3239. North Highway US 1, the phone number there, 267-8711. For auto, home, life. If you have a boat or a motorcycle, a four-wheeler, need renter's insurance, give Jennifer DeCandio, a DeCandio and so Allstate Insurance, a call at 631-3777. It's all over here on the campus of Coco High School. The Rockledge Raiders come in and defeat the Coco Tigers 73-60. to Steve Wilson looking for the Friday night locker room player of the game. And also we'll talk to head coach Logan Keith in just a minute after he finishes talking to his team. Remember Friday night the Rockledge Raiders will be in Melbourne again, or not the Rockledge Raiders, the Friday night locker room. Steve and I will be in Melbourne as the Melbourne Bulldogs host the Vieira Hawks ladies in a girls basketball game. So that will be airtime. will be somewhere around 7 o'clock. You can tune in that on 89.3 FM North Brevard, 90.3 FM in South Brevard, or you can pick it up on Sports Center for Merritt Island at SpaceCoastDaily.com. All right, Orville, I'm traveling, traveling the court looking for our player of the game, and I think I found him. Good. Okay, good. I thought you were talking, Steve, and you quit. Ah, oh, we're getting close. I had to get things situated. We're going to put a headset on our Tuesday evening edition of the Friday Night Locker Room player of the game. He came up to me before the game started and he said he was ready to do an interview. <laughs> Put that on for me if you will. This young man said he was ready to do an interview before the game, but uh, now he's he's got something to talk about. I don't know if he had much to talk about prior to, but he does now. Uh, Javante Hayes, congratulations, man. Exciting game. You. Uh, you came back into your old stomping grounds and, and yes, did what you needed to do. Your thoughts? I mean, everybody was telling me don't get involved in the crowd. You know, I used to be here last year. So, I mean, I just came out and played. I didn't really let the crowd affect me. We came out and got the win. Orville. Javante, tell me a little bit about playing the Coco Tigers. You know, you've been here. You moved. You went back over to the Rockledge. Right? 
anybody give you a hard time on the field, uh, on, on the, the floor? I mean, nah, not really, because, I mean, they're still like my brothers out here. So, I mean, on the court, we're not really friends, but off the court, we are. But, you know, it wasn't too much trash talking or nothing. But, I mean, some of the fans over here, the student section, yeah. they were giving me some trouble, but I didn't really let it affect me. You got to like that, though. That just shows that everybody is in, in into the ball game. You have to like that. Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about playing against the big guy, Youngblood. Youngblood come up with 33 points tonight for the Tigers. Uh -huh. That's a big body inside. Yeah, Antonio, I played with him last year. I mean, the coaches did a good job of working him over the summer because I know last year he wasn't as aggressive. This year he got more aggressive. And I like, I like to see the improvement because, you know, that's, my, that's like my brother too. Javante, tell us about your game, uh, your strengths and weaknesses. What do you like? What, where, where do you feel like you are right now? I mean, my weakness probably is shooting the ball consistently. I feel like I can run the floor. I mean, I, obviously I could do better. There's always room for improvement. But um, I feel like I look for the open man all the time. I like to get my teammates involved. People were trying to tell me come out here and uh, get all my points or whatever, but I wasn't really looking for that. I was trying to get my teammates involved. This was such a big game tonight. Anytime Coco and Rockledge plays, you know, it's a, it's a huge rival, a huge game. Probably more so, more so for you tonight. Can you settle down now? You enjoy tonight, but settle down and get ready for your next game. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really too worried about the game, honestly. I, was, I see it as another game. Yeah, I went here or whatever, but I just played it this game like I played any other game. Tell me any strategies going into halftime that Coach Logan Keith had for you guys that the score at halftime was 34-29, to 29, only a five-point lead. Mm -hmm. Any changes coming out into the third quarter? No, nah, not too much. He wanted us to talk more on defense, attack more. Cause, uh, we had Coco in the bonus pretty early. We were in the bonus and um, told us to uh, talk more on defense and let's break it open the lead, and that's what we did. Once again, Javante Hayes came up to the table before the game started. He said, okay, I'm ready uh -huh. to do my interview. <laughs> I'm here. Talk to me now. <laughs> so he had something to talk about. Tremendous game tonight. Congratulations, Javante. Uh, not only the, uh, the win by the Raiders, but your personal play tonight right. is going to get you the Friday Night Locker Room Player of the Game, young man. Congratulations. Right. Thanks. Uh, good luck the remainder of the season. Thank, Orville. You. Thank you very much. We'll turn him around here, Steve, and see if we can get – now turn him back this way. Turning back this way, Steve, we'll get a picture here All right. when Logan gets done. Right back here to me. A little closer, Steve. Steve Wilson and our Friday Night Locker Room Player of the Game. You'll be able to go on SpaceCoastDaily.com and hopefully take a look at this picture tomorrow. And uh, that will show our Player of the Game, Javante Hayes, the 5'10 senior, helping the Rockledge Raiders tonight defeat the Coco Tigers here on the Tiger floor. 73 to 60. So now we're going to talk to head coach Logan Keith. He's on his phone. He acts like a 12-year-old playing on his phone every, every time. But uh, we'll get Logan over here. Javante, congratulations, young man. Nice watching. We enjoyed watching you play. Thank you for that. Now joining us, the head coach of the Rockledge Raiders, Logan Keith. Coach, nice little win for you tonight. Hey, that was a good win. Anytime you can come over into Tiger's Den and and, and not get rattled and, and, you know, get settled in early and get that W, we'll take it. Coach, let me ask you a little bit. You know, Steve and I have followed, we've been doing this 17 years. We've watched you on the bench of the Rockledge Raiders for quite a few years. I think there's a little maturity, maybe getting a little bit older. I mean, your hair's gone, so let's figure that part out. <laughs> now you're putting it on your face. But not the animated and excitable Logan Keith we saw early in your career. Tell me a little bit about the transition coming through. Well, I tell you what, it, it's kind of it's kind of one of those things we, we got we we talk about doing uh, you know whatever is needed. Um, and that's what we always talk about. And I kind of feel like each night uh, who, who knows? I, I may have to act like that to get those <laughs> jokers fired up. But tonight, you know, I knew from the jump that we had that we were going to be focused and they didn't need me doing that. You know, they needed me to be calm for them and and, and to settle them down if needed. But um, I thought our seniors did a good job of, uh, uh, of keeping everybody, you know, settled. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but we finished that game with two freshmen on the floor, uh, Dorian Josie and uh, uh, TJ Jordan. Um, and, so, and so those guys were calm and collected the, the entire game. So I think all the way around, er, 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 everybody contributed and, and did a great job. Coach, talk a little bit about Dorian Josie. Only a ninth grader. Looks like he has all the makings of a good one. Dorian is going to, you know, by the time it's all said and done, he's going to be one of the best ones that's played at Rockledge. Um, he's mature. He's played a lot of basketball. 
but he has a focus in practice uh, and, a, and a desire to get better. Um, so, you know, I think he, he might not even be 15 yet. He may still be 14. <laughs> you know, he's close to 190 pounds. Uh, but he's just such a joy to coach, uh, such a great young man to be around, uh, and we're just looking forward to, to keeping it rolling. Yeah, I love his size. He's listed at 6'3", and you said he's pushing 190 in that neighborhood. Yeah. For a ninth grader, he's just going to grow. And I, I agree, by the time he's finished, he, he may do some special things at Rockers High School. Yeah, his hands, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he can catch anything in traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what makes him great. Him and uh, TJ Jordan work really well together off a of ball screen. So we like to try to put those guys in ball screens. Dorian can roll. But anytime that ball goes into him, he's going to catch it and, and either get fouled or, or get a bucket. Coach, a big win for you tonight. Anytime you can play Coco. You know, we talked about, Steve and I talked about it earlier. You know, it used to be the big rivalries was the Rockledge Raiders and the Coco Tigers in football. They created the barbecue bowl, and it rolled and rolled from there. The Tigers football program is still a very highly successful program. The Raiders football program in the last few years rebuilding. So the ball is kind of, for lack of a better word, fell into the basketball uh, side of it. And anytime the Raiders and the Tigers in basketball get together, if you're not in the gymnasium when the ninth graders tip off, you're watching the game through the window. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. And I tell you what, it's, I think it's one of the greatest rivalries and traditions in the entire state. Um, you know, we, we were in a, a, a Christmas tournament over in Ocala, and I had a couple guys come up and ask us how, how those Coco and, and Rockledge games are. Uh, so, you know, a lot of folks know about it. The kids know about it. They grew up in the community. They've been coming to these games since, you know, they were two and three years old. So they dream of this opportunity. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what keeps it rolling and, um, you know, keeps those guys excited. We're talking to Logan Keith, head coach of the victorious Rockledge Raiders. Coach, we're not too far away from district competition. Are, are you where you want to be? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Um, you know, we, we still got some kinks that we got to work out. We got to execute better when it's time to execute because not everything's going to be in transition. You know, there's going to be teams that sprint back and they, and they get to their spots. And then we have to be disciplined enough to set the right screen, you know, run, uh, cut hard and those types of things. So, you know, each day in practice, I kind of feel like coaches win practice and players win games. So we have to make sure we keep them focused each day in practice so we can get better and, and put ourselves in a, in a position to win a district. Well, Coach, it's always big when you can come here to the Coco High School and get a win inside this gymnasium. You get a big one tonight, and the final score 73 to 60. Congratulations on that. First time uh, that we've actually got to call a Raider game, I believe, this year. Uh, very enjoyable. Looks like you are on the right track with the team that you've got. Got some fine young men and, and uh, you know, very enjoyable to watch. And obviously the crowd likes to watch them or they wouldn't have filled this side of the gymnasium up. You're right. You know, we took some lumps last year. We made some decisions to go with those young guys as freshmen. Uh, so we're starting to see some payoff and some payout. So we're excited. Well, we'd like to thank you, Coach, again for uh, – Spending an opportunity. Steve Wilson now with another guest here on the Friday Night Locker Room. Steve? Yeah, I got the quarterback, the defensive back. And what is it that you don't do at Rockledge, Jacquez Lions? Uh, I don't play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't play tennis. That's about it. Exciting game tonight here at Coco. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, we had a good win. We came in strong. We came in with a good mind. Knew we had to get the W. And we just stayed focused the whole night and got, got the win. Jacquez, you're a senior this year, play football, play basketball. Which of the two do you see yourself playing at the next level? Uh, I still don't know yet. I still don't know. Don't know where you're going yet? No, sir. Don't know. Right, when you figure it out, you call the Friday Night Locker Room and Space Coast Daily, and you let us know. We're going to put it out over the air. A lot of interest in Jacquez Lions. We want to follow you. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Uh, congratulations tonight. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Jacquez Lions, he's one of the best. Jacquez Lions, six foot two senior, had 11 points tonight for the Rockledge Raiders. We'll give you the scoring now for the Rockledge Raiders. Uh, Robbie Hicks had 10 points. Zay Stevens with 14. Jacquez Lions, who just talked to T Steve, 11 points. TJ Jordan had eight. Javante Hayes, our player of the game, with nine points. Carlos Jones with three. Dorsey Josie, the 6'3 freshman, with 20 points. The Rockledge Raiders come away with a win, 70. Three to 60. Steven? Exciting basketball game. The Rockledge Raiders, it's a clean sweep. They, the Raiders, ninth graders won, the JV won, and the varsity won. It doesn't happen very often, but it did happen tonight. 
So the Rockledge Raiders get a big win this Friday night. We'll be in Melbourne as the Vieira Hawks travel to Melbourne in the ladies' version of the basketball. We'll show the ladies a little love. We'll go on the air somewhere around 7 o'clock. So uh, we'll be down there then, and the Rockledge and the Vieira Hawks and the Melbourne Bulldogs go at it in ladies' basketball. So for Tom Palermo at Sports Center over on Merritt Island, SpaceCoastDaily.com, Steve Wilson beside me. Larry Torch, the official, coming over and saying good job, and he done a nice one. He's on his way out the door. Orville Susong, thanking you for listening to the Friday Night Locker Room. This has been a presentation of the Florida Broadcasting Group. We'll see you Friday night.